since Eureka seems to have been really your first big project, at least that's out there on the boards. First for in the television. Yeah, yeah, yep. and it's it, it's your 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 face, your name is all over it, and it's comedy, it's drama, it's science fiction, um, it's. Uh, I guess you could say it's just a mishmash of everything, of all these great genres that most of the fans appreciate in individual shows wrapped up into one, like chocolatey goodness. Ooh, so stupid. You should put it into a blender. I don't know. But look what came out, a most delicious yeah, shake. And And would you say then, was there, was there one of those tacks in the show? Was it the comedy, the drama? Is there a particular part of the show that you felt um, was would really make a statement for the show or would you say it's it's all of it combined and you couldn't miss any of it like none of it could be less left out of the mix i mean i think that ultimately it's, it's finding the right balance of the elements that we have you know the humor and the emotion and you know, the real characters and the mistakes um i i think for me i i i i like i like comedy i think it's i i, I like to do um, it's not necessarily broad. We didn't try not to do broad too often. Sometimes we did for fun. We got this guy next to me, so he would always push me further in that direction. Um, but uh, you know, I, there wasn't at the time that we were creating the show a lot of light-hearted sci-fi and not light-hearted uh, earth-based. And I think that that was the thing that was sort of unique about our show is that we were not taking ourselves too seriously, but we were taking the stakes for the characters seriously. You know, we could you know have some inside jokes and a couple of links and nods to the audience, and ideally they would get invested in the characters and those relationships, and you could take them to a, a, a really honest, dramatic moment where you might actually get someone on the verge of tears, and then uh, and then you turn it with a joke. That sort of gets them to laugh through those times. And that, for me, those are the scenes that are the most satisfying to write. And you can really have uh, an honest moment where you're getting invested in the relationship between those characters, and then they make you laugh. And it's a really nice way to escape your own life a little bit. And it, it tends to, to mimic reality, too. You know, it's like the show itself, I was mentioning to this to, to Joe earlier. It's, it's, it's a science fiction show, essentially. And yet, even though all this, the situations can be just so fantastical, I mean, GD itself is fantastical almost, you know, the things that can come from it, and yet the relationships, the people, are absolutely grounded. I mean, they're, they're the, they're the core our, of it, you know? That was our approach. You know, Andy, Andy Cosby, who co-created the show, mm -hmm. and he and I, I think, are, it was sort of our sensibilities together that, that brought the, those different sides of it. But, I mean, ultimately, um, you know, we always approached the show as a character drama at first. And so the storylines that we would come up with, um, you know, for me in the writer's room, say, you know, I, guys, we have to, if you were to pull the science out of the show, we'd still want to watch this. So we have to have the, that kind of level of commitment to what the story is that we're telling and why we're telling the story. It can't just be about you know, the flux capacity that's going to go crazy and flip the table. And you know, the science became the catalyst for that character film. And ideally, we would find ways to sort of mirror them, you know, thematically uh, for the episode. And, and uh, we try to do that as often as possible. I think, to me, honestly, one of one of the relationships that was the most um, important to me that was that we introduced later in the series that I think is kind of um, really stands up as a, a, an example of that was the relationship between Deputy Andy and Sarah, our smart house. And when we originally told the network that we wanted to do this, there was really a lot of skepticism. I mean, they just were like, you know, they're secondary characters, it's going to get an old, it's going to be an old the house. One of them's a smart house, you can't act. And um, writing some of those scenes, I, I think, were, was some of the most satisfying um, material that we got to do, and the response from fans, who, especially in the episode when Andy was stuck on Titan, and when, yeah, the, when he came back at the end of... Sarah had basically left him at the altar, and he was like, you know, just, just like his mom. Yeah. And that, that you know, age-old story, boy, I meets mean, house, boy, loses house. And people really got so upset, they cried, they were just so invested in that relationship. That's the beauty of sci-fi. That's the part it that sci-fi can buy. And you can't do that on any other kind of it's show. It's that extra step that you can say, you know what, so, we can take that humanity and bring it to a robot I mean, and the house. Yeah, I mean, the relationships yeah. between Carter and Alice, and obviously, and, and you know, and, and Henry and Grace and, 
and uh, Zane and, and, and Lupo, I think, are you know central to the show. Yeah. But the relationship between Sarah and Deputy Andy was no less important. It didn't resonate with yeah. us, the, the audience. And, and, and like you said, it's really what other show is going to be able to do that to pull that off. No, that's that's great. So.